um, I would like to share with you my own story, which is a story of uh, a very ignorant person, but um, a person who has and had some devotion to the spiritual path, um, some devotion to Dharma and yoga, of course. So at a certain point, um, after reading spiritual books for many, many years, I finally listened to my teachers who told me that you have to practice, you have to meditate, you have to chant every day, and you have to start every day by bowing, doing so-called prostrations many, many times. And... Um, I, uh, I was uh, kind of a city girl at that time, you know, uh, living in a comfortable apartment in a temperature-controlled environment, eating what I want, getting in a car every morning, driving to my office, sitting in a uh, comfortable uh, office chair the whole day long, talking on the phone. Um, using the computer and then going back home or going somewhere for a glass of wine and a nice meal. <laughs> so my lifestyle was definitely very, very different <laughs> compared to uh, yogis of India and Tibet. So anyway, I respected my teachers and I followed the advice. And I felt that, of course, my life stream, uh, my mind stream, my way of thinking was changing tremendously. It had a very positive effect on me. But at the same time, my health started deteriorating. And I developed uh, serious kidney problems, uh, joints problems. I also began experience problems with digestion. Um, and I also experienced um, fatigue periodically. So I was very puzzled with what was going on, but I never connected it with my Dharma practices. Um, at a certain point, I decided to attend a, um, a one-year Dharma and yoga retreat which was uh, taking place in a very isolated environment, really far away with no contact with the rest of the world. Um, I've heard very good things about that setting, uh, but when I arrived and I saw the retreatants who have been doing practices there for um, a long time, sometimes for several years, sometimes for several months, I was actually um, quite puzzled why their health wasn't good. Many of them suffered from various health issues and often people did not have those issues when they would um, enter the retreat, but when they would finish it, the, the issues were present. So I asked my, um, I asked the Tibetan Lama, uh, Rinpoche about what's going on because I really wanted to know how is it possible am I missing something and his reply was you are too attached to health to being healthy or making others people healthy you need to overcome this attachment and again, I listened to him and I was trying to overcome this attachment, but I was still puzzled. And um, also it was kind of strange because every morning we would, um, as a group, we would do a prayer for our own health, to be healthy, to continue on that path, and also for health of all people um, around us and all people. Uh, and all beings on this, in this world. 
So I was thinking, you know, this is kind of strange. You know, we are praying for help. And yet, it seems like we are worsening our health here. What's going on? It was extremely stressful to be in that retreat. And even though I didn't know anything about breathing then, often I would notice my heavy breathing because, because it was very stressful and many people experienced the same thing. So in that retreat, I didn't find answers to my questions, what's going on. And later I found them in the Bouteika method. In fact, uh, the first person who uh, was able to answer my questions was Dr. Novozhilov in Moscow, uh, the, one of the co-authors of the Bouteika method. And he said, of course, people were losing their health uh, to a certain degree in that setting because they were practicing heavy mouth breathing, which, is, which doesn't support health. And he was absolutely right. And I also noticed that even at home, when I was doing chanting or when I was doing prostrations, I was always breathing heavily through my mouth. And of course, this was creating my kidney problems, joint problems, and other health issues, allergies, and so on. So after I became familiar with the Boutek method, I... Um, changed my breathing, but I didn't change my processes. In fact, I, uh, my Dharma practices became my Bhuteka practices, my breathing exercises. And when I changed my breathing, everything changed. First of all, this exactly the same exercises which were ruining my health before started improving my health. And within just a few months, I was able to stop all these problems which originally were created by um, improper breathing while doing Dharma and yoga practices. And on top of it, my uh, progress was accelerated enormously. In, uh, in the Bouteika Clinic in Moscow, they have a, like a little picture on the wall with a saying of a Russian saint, uh, the saint of Orthodox Christian tradition. And the quote says, if you breathe, quiet, if you breathe silently, well, if, if you breathe silently while praying, God will be able to hear you better. <laughs> yeah, so it was almost like that, you know, suddenly I felt that those incredible, you know, pure, divine, beautiful vibrations of um, ancient practices of yoga and dharma became much closer to me. Um, and they were able to, and I was able to receive this energy of transformation much, much better. So what I learned from my experience is that most teachers, even the best gurus who represent the purest lineage are not familiar and are not aware of um, the, the, the difference between um, the recipients of the practices, of yoga and dharma practices uh, now and how it was before. And this is um, a problem because we dharma practitioners go to our teachers for an advice for recommendation, but often because there is a gap between how people used to breathe and how we breathe now, they are not able to give us the right answer. In fact, the reason I um, 
damaged my health by doing dharma practices was the advice of my um, teacher who I highly, highly respect. And he said, you have to practice your, you have to exercise your willpower, your discipline, no matter how you feel, you have to continue doing prostrations. So every morning I was pushing myself, um, doing prostrations when my breathing was too weak to support it. It would be, of course, a much better approach to strengthen my breathing first and then following the advice of my teacher. But as I said before, I was ignorant. I didn't know. And I definitely paid for my mistakes. So I think that um, we, this group here, and people who I will the Bottega method in general are so fortunate because we can fill that gap and to avoid falling into a hole <laughs> by combining both uh, yoga and dharma and the Bottega breathing method. And generally speaking, I believe that the rules of the new world <laughs> of this modern world should be this. If your control pose, or better to say, positive maximum pose is below 20 seconds, you need to be extremely careful about any yoga or dharma techniques. You need to do only those things which allow you to breathe effortlessly and silently through your nose. If you can't, if your breathing becomes heavy, then don't do them. Don't do those techniques. You are not ready for them yet. You need to work on your breathing first. Then when your uh, positive maximum pose is between 20 and 40 seconds, it becomes safer to do um, uh, breathing, uh, to do, sorry, dharma and yoga techniques. Also, you still need to breathe through your nose and do it as silently as possible and avoid anything which will make you breathe through your mouth or breathe heavily which means when your control pose is between 20 and 40 uh, seconds, you really shouldn't do uh, pranayama techniques, which are advanced techniques of yoga, because they could still hurt you, they could injure your respiratory system and other systems in your body. Um, and then when your uh, control pose is 60 seconds or higher, everything changes. And the techniques which were uh, injurious before become super effective. So this is the time to practice various techniques and pranayama if you need to breathe uh, through your mouth, if you need to breathe heavily, doing some specific breathing exercises, you can do that. And that will actually increase your control pose enormously. Because now at that point, you have a really strong foundation. You could build <laughs> a really good house on it the house of health. Uh, and of course, breathing through the nose and silent breathing is still very important the rest of the time. But with a uh, control pause uh, of 60 seconds or higher, it's not even a question for a person. It just happens automatically. So, um, Based on what I know about the Bottega method, I could say that for us modern people, the path of yoga 
became a little bit slower than it used to be years, maybe hundreds of years before. But we really have to respect this process because by respecting it, we will not lose our health and we will accelerate our spiritual development. So uh, being in the energy of the modern world, pushing all the time, trying to accomplish everything faster, doesn't work with um, timeless, precious, spacious yoga path. <laughs> and in order to store a step on that path properly and be safe, I believe, first of all, we need to slow down our breathing. <laughs> 